Hey, my friend, welcome to the Art of Online Business podcast. My name is Rick Mulready, and I'm an online business coach. I'm an ads expert, and most importantly, I'm a dad. And this show is where we help established online course creators and coaches create more profit, more impact with less hustle. All right, let's get into it. Hey, hey, what's up, my friends? Welcome to episode 636 here on the show. And we're back for part two with my good friend, Pat Flynn, talking all about YouTube. And today we dive into everything from YouTube shorts. Should you be doing YouTube shorts if you've got a YouTube channel? We talk about editing, the types of, you know, really small editing tricks, if you will, that can really improve how long somebody watches your video, which is really key to YouTube's algorithm. We talk about how to get your first 1,000 subscribers on your podcast, on your podcast, on your YouTube channel, as I'm podcasting here. We talk about how Pat has built his Pokemon YouTube channel called Deep Pocket Monster to over a quarter of a million subscribers in just over a year and a half. We talk about analytics today and the importance of analytics and really simplifying how you look at and use analytics for your YouTube channel. And then also at the end of the episode here today, we talk about the, all the monetization opportunities. So definitely stick around for this conversation here. Before we dive into it, as I mentioned in part one last week, I really wanna encourage you to go check out Pat's YouTube from scratch online course. This is all about teaching you step-by-step. Step. He actually builds a YouTube channel right in the course, how to get your first thousand subscribers. That's what YouTube from scratch is all about. I am a proud affiliate for that course because I've gone through it myself. And I'm not just saying this because Pat is a bestie over here. It is the best YouTube course I've gone through. And I've bought three other programs and by far, this is the least expensive and the best one. And so I wanna encourage you to go check it out. When you go through my link, rickmulready.com forward slash Pat, I've got a couple bonuses there for you that you can only get through that link. And then also you can jump in to the program and get your YouTube channel off and running. All right, so without further ado, let's get dive into part two here with Pat Flynn talking some YouTube. All right, my man, as we jump back into part two of our conversation around YouTube, we got into it in part one. We covered a lot of different stuff. We did. We, did. we, we like, went deep, and, and, and that's why we're back for part two, because we're going to go even deeper. I originally told you, like, all right, let's do one, one hour, and we'll cut that into two, and it'll be a two-parter that way. But I was like, no, this is so good. We're getting <laughs> deep into stuff here. That And there's so much I want to cover in this part two here. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest takeaways for me from part one was, well, there's a couple of different things. Number one, like the importance of the title and thumbnail. Oh, yeah. And you're actually working backwards. Like, so it's title first coming up with those like ideas for titles. And that is what informs the video. Right. That way the experience for think. the viewer is, is, is coherent, right? From title yeah. to what you shoot to the promise, all that, all that. Yeah. And so that is just a big mind shift. And you and I've talked about that a lot, but like, Cause I've always been that way. It's like, oh, all right, I'm gonna do the video or this is the topic, but then like headline after mm -hmm. that. And so we flipped that on its head. And the other thing too, was just the opportunity that exists with YouTube and the ability to be found really quickly, like no guarantees, but you know, you use the analogy of, from a fishing perspective, having, you know, you're not going to catch fish. If we don't have lines in the water. Right. Whereas we're, if we are not creating videos and putting videos out, we're not giving ourselves the opportunity for the YouTube algorithm to like, you know, pick up on something and for something to just really run. Mm -hmm. That's a big shift. And it's like, Hey, just keep putting stuff out, keep putting stuff. Yeah, out. Yeah. And I mean, and just like fishing, there's different ways to fish, right? But if yep. we're in the world of wanting to get results a little faster if we're in the world of wanting to see sales come in all that kind of stuff that's like bass fishing right where it's a little bit more you got to be a little bit more you got to cast more often to the different spots because they might be here they might be there they might be in the top surface water column and they might be on the bottom you're you don't know and you can change techniques and experiment to see what the pattern is and then like youtube it'll tell you hey we like this video great you found a bait that works keep doing that 
But there's other yeah. kinds of phishing that many people use in the equivalent would be like podcasting, where it's not necessarily as, you know, cast a whole bunch of things and see what works, but it's more like trout fishing. Trout fishing, you put something out there and you leave it be and you mm -hmm. wait and you wait, but you know it's good bait and eventually a fish will come and find it. And while you're waiting, you're doing these other things. You're chatting with your friends or having a beer or something on the, on the shore or what, what, what have you. It's just a different kind of thing. But I think for your clients and everybody listening, I mean, we're, we're bass fishing here. We need to consciously create things that we know or at least have a better chance of getting found. And again, the cool thing is your next video might be the one, right? Just like your next yep. cast might be the, the personal best. Right. Along those same lines doing different things to be found everyone's talking about youtube shorts yep the micro content mm -hmm. you have one i believe for for deep pocket monster which we're going to talk about here in a couple of minutes the last i looked you had like 12 million views or something like yeah, that one 60 second video now has 15 million views 15 million views and here's the big kicker i wish yeah. i didn't film that video <laughs> i wish i didn't film it go on Go on. You're like, well, that's 15 million views. Like, isn't that great? Okay, we, we got some subscribers from it, but it's a completely different engine inside of the world of YouTube. It is their way to compete with the likes of Instagram Reels and TikTok, right? So they're creating this yep. platform that essentially is like those short form platforms, but built within the ecosystem of YouTube. And the reason why I say I, don't, I wish we didn't do it is because for a very long time, and YouTube's trying to fix this and they are actively fixing it, but... Mm -hmm. People were seeing our shorts and it was essentially sabotaging our longer form videos, which were more relevant and deeper and established a better relationship. We know this to be true with the millions of views because most of the comments on that video now are not people who are interested in Pokemon or subscribe to my channel percentage wise. It's very small. If you look at the, uh, that video, it's based on a, a a card that a fan sent me that was obviously a fake and then i kind of ripped it open and saw there was another card behind it that somebody had pasted pasted the the big expensive card on and the comments are this person deserved it or i can't believe adults are playing with children's toys anybody who spends that much money on a pokemon card deserves to have their money taken away like uh like nasty toxic yeah. stuff because it's reaching a general audience Right. Yeah. And what would happen was, and, and we, we continue to see this in ways, our really good long form videos, which tell a story or provide information, sometimes the analytics for those go down, the views go down, the reach goes down, and then the shorts essentially take, take its place of, uh, as far as what people are seeing and, and what's being recommended to them. So in many ways, even though we got a, a lot of views, I wish those videos didn't exist because they've been sabotaging the growth from and reach from our other videos. And Okay, 15 million views. The shorts revenue engine is separate from the AdSense revenue engine on the long form videos, on regular YouTube videos. So although that mm -hmm. video has 15 million views, it's only accounted yep. for like $900 total on the shorts yep. side of, of generating an income. Whereas we have one video that's, you know, 50,000 views that has earned $2,000, right? And many, many yep. more examples of, of videos like that. So I'm hearing no go on. No, I didn't. For, for my channel and our focus <laughs> on growth with the storytelling we're, we're doing and the information and the fact that we want people to just see those videos. Yeah. No shorts for us. There are other channels, however, where they're treating YouTube like Instagram Reels or TikTok where okay. their, their strategy is let's create these short form videos because we want to reach people who are interested in this and then it leads into something else just like it would on TikTok or Instagram Reels. And there are some cases, very few cases that I've found so far where a person is doing both long form video and doing a really mm -hmm. good job with short form. And I think when that works well, there's an example, Colin and Samir, they're podcasters who have a video podcast on YouTube, but they also take clips from their video podcast and play 30, 60 second little clips that are very, very interesting. So interesting, in fact, that they make you want to go and watch the rest of that video in and go find the long form version of that. Mm, and and okay. in that case, that's working. You might be familiar with Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan clips. You might've seen some of his clips on a lot of shorts where he's talking to, I don't know, Neil deGrasse Tyson about 
the fact that we're all made up of stars or something. And it's just a 60 second clip, but that is a micro moment in a much larger episode. And either way, it's still getting Joe in front of people, which is his goal. So it really depends. It, it, it really depends. And it's worth experimenting with. But the truth is, if you are focusing on long form videos and you want to build a, a, a loyal audience that way, I wouldn't at this time use shorts. If you're going to do short form, I would actually do it on TikTok or Instagram Reels. Yeah. So I guess that's what I was saying. Yeah. So no go on shorts yeah. in that. So that also brings up another important point where I think that it holds a lot of people back from creating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I've talked about this for like one thing that's held me back. No, I'm not making an excuse is editing. Right. So in part one, we talked about like, just like answering people's frequently asked questions is one of the easiest ways to get started mm -hmm. getting your videos out there. It doesn't have to be fancy or anything like that. What are we looking for from in an editing experience, if you will, for the type of viewing that people do with YouTube videos? Great question, because you could just turn on the camera, speak into it and it's already done. You could, you could publish it. And that could suffice. That could work. But we are now living in an age where we're going to have to do a little bit more to keep that retention going on those videos. And the way that I like to do that is, again, we want to try to make this as simple as possible. I mean, you could hire an editing team that could masterfully compose your video in a way that just has like all these cuts and music and swipes and B-roll and all that kind of stuff. Those are things that anybody could do and you can slowly add them over time, which is what my recommendation would be. But from a high level, I think that, especially if you're answering questions, at the moment you have a punchline or something really important to say where you, it's, it's like the moment in a conversation where you kind of lean in, you might slow down a little and you, you have this really important point to, to say. That's a moment in your video where you can insert some sort of pattern interrupt to emphasize that point. This is a, a very easy way to begin to start keeping retention during a video is that during those moments, right? Maybe you're telling a story and then there's something that happens in that story. And that's when you can edit something into that video at that time. So what could you edit? Well, you could simply just at that moment, zoom in on your face. It's just, that's called a quick cut. So you see mm -hmm. like your, your chest up, and then at that moment during the punch line, it just zooms right into just your face is there and, yep. and your chest is gone. So you're, you're zoomed in and that emphasizes that point. And then when you get back and reset, you're zoomed out. And now that's a nice like reset. It's, a, it's some sort of movement that's happening in the video to keep people going and then reset for the next part. Another thing you can do is you can add text on the screen during those points. So most editing platforms I use I actually use ScreenFlow to edit my videos because it's just so easy. ScreenFlow is a, a Mac tool. There is a PC equivalent called Camtasia Studio, but it's mainly used as a screen recording or screen capture software. That's actually how I did my first videos was recording what I was doing on my computer because I was too afraid to put my face on camera. And so that's a neat way to, to get started if you, if you don't want to put your face on camera. But that tool has some really quick, easy ways to edit videos and, and put text in and zoom in, zoom out, those kinds of things. But adding text to support the things you're saying at those times, especially if you're doing like a list or something like that, you'll, you'll see that that's very common in a lot of videos. One step further with the text is as you are saying the thing, for example, you might say like Facebook retargeting. Then when you say Facebook, Facebook comes on the screen. And when you say retargeting, targeting, retargeting comes on the screen. And that mm. again, just emphasizes the point as you're saying it. And to edit that, you just add the text and just drag it to the point at which you say that. And you can have it stay on the screen longer, shorter, or whatever, whatever. And then you can play around with the, the, the transition tools in there if you want to make it even more fancy. Another thing you could do is you can simply add in an image of a thing, right? You might be talking about... Facebook retargeting. Okay. When you say Facebook retargeting, share an image, a screen capture or screen, even just a screenshot. It doesn't even need to be video. Just insert a picture of the Facebook dashboard and where it says retargeting on it. Boom. Now it's a visual that goes along with the thing that you're saying. 
one step further beyond that, maybe it's not just a still image. Maybe it is a, a video, but it's a it's B, it's called B B roll. That's background video. Mm -hmm. As you still talk, there's a video playing underneath that's something different. That's not your face. And so that, again, just adds more movement to the story that you're telling or the information that you're providing. And there's very simple ways to do that. My favorite, I mean, this is a big tip that we talk about a lot, is if, especially if you're sharing a product, like say you're talking about, I don't know, the your desk setup and everything that you have on your desk, which is a fun video to do. People are really interested in that kind of stuff. You could take your phone and open up the slow-mo feature on your phone. And let's say I'm talking about this microphone here. I'm just going to like film my microphone and go around it in slow-mo. And now I have this beautiful, like cinematic slow-mo of my microphone that I can just insert into the edit, just drag and drop it. I can cut the parts out that I don't want. And now as I'm talking about the high LPR 40 microphone, it cuts to that view, the slow-mo view, panoramic view going mm -hmm. around. It's just a really neat way to be begin to add some color to the video that you have and just start simple. Over time, you can get a little fancier with the edits and stuff. And there's a lot of people on YouTube who teach this kind of stuff for free, but just get the videos out there. I mean, like I said, the last time in part one, it's like, you want to imagine that your first hundred videos are going to be for your first hundred subscribers. So you have a lot of room for error. You have a lot of room to experiment with and see what the audience and YouTube is excited with. And you'll probably have a lot more than hundred subscribers after your first hundred videos by just executing and, and constantly learning. Do you go into this deep, more deeply in YouTube from scratch? Oh yeah. So of our, course. our course, YouTube from scratch, which you may have heard of the first time we do go deeper. And in, in fact, Caleb takes a video that I film. So one of the, one of the modules is I film a YouTube video and I show you from start to finish how I came up with the idea, starting with the title and how I went outside and took shots of the thing. The subject matter is a, a, a an expensive strawberry that I grew because it's a gardening channel. And so I go through all the different ways that I film that, the different styles of filming, and Caleb shows you exactly how to edit that video or how, how mm, he's cool. editing that video. So you can see exactly how he's putting the story together and adding the text and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we, 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 we don't just tell you what to do. We show you what to do. So yeah. I love it. By the way, as I talked about in part one, you all, it's rickmulvery.com forward slash pat. And that is a special bonus and for Pat's YouTube from scratch program online course. I have it. I've gone through it. It's awesome. Thanks. And we're, it's giving me the kick in the butt. <laughs> going. We're, we're very proud of it. You know, there's a lot of YouTube courses out there. Many are great, yep. but they're too long and they're too overwhelming and too confusing. YouTube is a confusing platform and we wanted to distill just like, okay, if we were going to teach this and only teach what a person needed to know and nothing more, what could we put in here? And that, that's exactly what YouTube from scratch is. And then over time, you can begin to start getting a little bit more into the weeds and the advanced parts of it. But we just want to get you started. And the truth is, when you get the results faster, you're going to be more excited about it and, and, then, and then want to yeah. keep going with it, right? So You're really teaching that how to get your first thousand subscribers. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the punchline or, or the tagline, essentially. And even if yeah. you have over a thousand and, and you know that you just would like to go back to some really good basics on what's working right now and then, and then also the accountability and the drive, then yeah, yeah. This, this would be a good, a good buy. If you have, you know, five to 10,000 subscribers already, and you kind of know what's working with your channel and, and you want to get into more advanced stuff, then this course is not for you. I mean, that's, there's, there's other yeah. more advanced courses and, but the beginner who's starting from, from the top, like we're here for you. And I can attest to, and I'm not just saying this again, I mentioned this in, in part one, I'm not just saying this because Pat's right here. Like I have bought three other YouTube courses. I can confirm this. Yes. And they're great, but they're all so overwhelmingly confusing. I, I was just like, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went through Pat's course and it's like, step by step in, you know, if any, you know, for those of you who know, Pat, it, it, he's all about simplicity and how he presents things and teaches it really breaks it down really well. This course is no different. Thank you. So talking about getting to that first thousand subscribers. Now you have another channel besides your own personal channel. We've been, we've been mentioning it throughout, you know, this so far in this episode and last episode, but you created a Pokemon channel. I did during the pandemic called deep pocket monster and we are recording this on a wednesday morning you and i and county are somewhere out fishing on sunday morning 
just a few days ago and you said, I believe you said I'm six subscribers away from 250,000 subscribers. Yes. And, and at the time of this, this is a year and a half. Yeah. Where are we right we're, now? Where are you? We're at 250,800 subscribers. So we're at a quarter million subs and, and sorry to interrupt you, but I think you were going to say, no, this is less than two years of work. This is like just over a year and a half. Yeah. You've reached a quarter of a million subscribers. How? <laughs> How have you done How? that? I mean, we lay everything out in the course, but I, I, I've been talking about it the, the, the whole time here between part one and, and part two as far as like the approach that we're taking and the diving into the analytics. You had asked me at the end of, of part one, like what are the most important things that a person should understand? And it's those very yeah. basic analytics that are essentially YouTube telling you what to do or what's not working right? Your retention graphs. And you can use that for your benefit on your podcast or on your blog with page and time on site. But as far as the, the channel is concerned, the other part of it is I'm just having a ton of fun with it. And I think if you're having fun with it, your audience is going to also have a lot of fun with it too. I've also been very strategic with, okay, well, where, what's my lane here, right? Because there's a lot of other people who discuss and talk about Pokemon, but I'm not an expert in certain areas of it. I never claim to be. I don't have the best cards. So what can I bring to the table? We talked about that in part one. But what is really working now, like today, is putting a little bit of extra time and attention into the video as far as the storytelling or what's at stake. And the more that we focus on that, like, why should a person stick around to the end here? The videos have always just done so much better, right? So we are working on a video right now, like right after this call, I'm going to be finishing filming this next video that's coming out this weekend where, so the story is I was looking at my binders and I have a binder that was, I had a binder that was missing 28 cards from completing this set. The set includes over 200 cards and I was so close. And Dan was like, oh, why don't you just go buy those cards? And I was like, well, that's not fun. And he's like, well, let's make it fun. How, how do we make finishing this binder fun and let's film it? And I was like, oh, this is- Dan's your editor. Dan's my editor, yeah. And, and, and we yeah. talk about ideas like this all the time. That, that's another important thing and takeaway is like, we give ourselves space to get creative. Yeah. Trying to fit creativity in the middle of all the other busy work you're doing is very difficult. But putting a 30 minute block of time, an hour block of time in your day or in your week to literally sit down and brainstorm and just have fun and be creative has been so rewarding, right? Because it's a different part yeah. of your brain. So this is in one of those moments, Dan and I were talking and I bring up this binder idea and he's like, why don't we make it fun? So, okay, 24 hour Pokemon binder challenge or something. We, 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 I, I don't, I don't have the title right in front of me. But essentially, I have only 24 hours to do this. So how mm -hmm. am I within 24 hours? I started yesterday. Today is the last day. And I'm going around San Diego to different card shops to find these individual cards that I need for the binder. And I was at a comic store yesterday called TC's Rockets down kind of by Lake Murray, in fact. That's what your Instagram stories were. Yes. <laughs> Cause you, I was like, where are, where is he? Yeah. Right now? <laughs> so I, I was, I was there and I called him ahead of time. I was like, guys, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber, which is very hard for me to do. I'm actually really shy and get very nervous doing things like this, but knowing that I had this like video to, to do, it like got me encouraged and knowing that it would be fun and also give them some love. I called up TC Rockets yesterday and I said, Hey, I am a YouTuber and I'd love to come in and film. Here's my idea. Would you be down? And they're like, Let's do it. We'll see you here. So I went in and I filmed some B-roll stuff. And then I, and then I sat down with a guy named Brad there and we opened the cards together trying to find the missing cards. And when we did, we would like high five each other. And I just filmed the whole thing. And that's all going to get put into a pile later. That'll be sifted through to turn this into a story. But we found nine out of the 28 cards. So I'm still 19 short and I'm going to go to a mall today where there's a comics and stuff to try to find more singles. So again, I'm making an adventure out of it because that's fun and different. And here's the thing, if I don't complete this, I have to give the whole binder to my son. So now there's like a reason to stick around to the end. Is he gonna lose and give this, give these cards away right. or is he gonna get it? And hopefully I get it. And so again, these things, these things come in. And then what happens is we film everything and then the editor will take a pass or I might take a pass 
And then I go, hey, there, like, there's something missing here in the middle that needs to happen. Okay, let me let me film something that I'm going to insert in here of me in the car. Like, I need something comedic, so I'm going to be in the car singing Pokemon for like two seconds. So mm -hmm. even after everything, I'm going to pretend like I'm on my way to the place, and I'm just going to get in the car, edit that little thing of me singing Pokemon, and then we'll just insert it in there. Did it actually happen at that time where I was driving? No. But it helps yeah. the story along, Tells and story. nobody's going to be like, hey, you filmed that part. Like, A, nobody's going to know. Well, you all know now. But, I mean, this is how movies are filmed. It's to, to make the story flow and keep it going better. So, again, the approach of how do we go a little extra? Because the audience notices that. They know, they could feel that you took a little bit of extra time to make this thing even a little bit better for them. Yeah. And and I think that's what's really been helping us right now. So we're we're about to do a big live stream now because we've had the community actually a lot of a lot of people sent me stuff to give away to other community members. That's become a thing on the channel now too, which is cool. That's so cool. So we'll have what we call the 250k live polka party on September 21st or September I don't I don't know exactly the date, but it should be fun. It should be fun. I've been on one of your live streams before, and I don't know Pokemon at all. Well, I know... You know some Pokemon, <laughs> right? Like Pikachu or whatever. Pikachu. Isn't it like Char Charmaine or Charmander. something? Charmander. Char Charmaine. Charmaine. This is how much I know about Pokemon. <laughs> um, well, I happened to be on YouTube, and like I noticed that you were live, and I was like, oh... And I went on there and you're like, there was like 800 people on there and it was just the comments were like, brrr, like, like it was, I was like, holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is a, this is a community it's here. An, th those are events, you know, and the live streaming aspect of YouTube is like another separate thing that you can add onto your channel to bring the community together. The, the live streams always get way less views than my other videos, but it brings people together in real time and you can have some fun. So what I do is I open packs, we see what we get. I give away some stuff, we we answer questions, and we just have a good time. But yeah, sometimes there's up to, I think the most that we've had at one time was like 1,800 people watching live. And there's so many fun things you can do as a creator when you have that many people on all in one room. You can just say, hey, chat, I need some luck on the next pack. I want to see everybody put the four-leaf clover emoji in the chat right now. It's like... <laughs> And now everybody feels like they're a part of something. And what happens is yeah. maybe we do strike gold on that pack. And then everybody now feels like they had something to do with it, right? Just like at a baseball game or, or at a football game when the crowd goes wild to try to interrupt the, the the other team or something. Like crowd control is really fun. You need moderators, though. That's that's the one thing I learned really quickly up front is as your channel continues to grow, if you do go live, you need some people to help control the chat. And, and, and I've recruited nine to ten people right now who – were just viewers before who I always saw show up. I wanted to give them some recognition and they were more than happy to step up and become moderators, which essentially means they can kick people out or block messages that are bad. Yeah. One thing I did was when we hit 100,000 subscribers, you get a silver play button from YouTube, which is really awesome. This is my second one from Deep Pocket Monster. I ordered another one. They give you one for free, but you can order more if you want. And I ordered an extra one and I've sent it to almost all of my moderators now to spend a couple of days with it and sign it and then send it to the next person. So they, I, I really want them so to feel cool. like they're a part of it. And, and they are, they like, they've, they've helped out so much. You're creating, you're, you're so good at creating community. And this is proof that you can create community on a platform like YouTube. On a platform like YouTube with a topic that you before knew nothing about. And as a reminder, I didn't know anything about Pokemon until 2020 when I, just yeah. got into it because my kids and and they've since stopped or have slowed down and and I've just kept going. <laughs> you keep going, yeah, I love it. So just wanted to jump in here for a minute, and as I did last week. By the way, this is sort of a new thing I'm trying. Let me know what you think of me coming in here in the middle and recapping and pulling out the bullet points for you from the first half and letting you also know what's coming up in the second half. Shoot me a DM over on Instagram, at Rick Mulready. Let me know if you like this little segment here. So basically, I want to pull out the points from the, from the first part of the interview here with Pat, and we talked about YouTube Shorts. Everybody's talking about do YouTube shorts, do YouTube shorts. And Pat was like, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Do YouTube shorts, depending on what the goal is for your channel. And he said that some people are doing a great job with both types of videos, meaning YouTube shorts and the longer form YouTube videos. 
he's done some shorts in the past, but actually one of his most viewed shorts, and it's been viewed millions and millions of times, it actually sabotaged his longer form video. And he explained why that was the case, right? And so if you were focusing on long form videos on your YouTube channel and you want to build an audience, Pat actually recommended not using shorts, instead using TikTok or Instagram reels for those types of videos. But as with everything, and, and, and as you mentioned, it's about testing, right? Testing to see, all right, try some shorts out. How does it affect the rest of your channel? We also talked about editing. And I think the big takeaway here is when you're first getting going on your YouTube videos, don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to get fancy with your, with your editing, keep it simple. And then as you, as you learn more and as you get more consistent, put out more videos, then you can start to add in, you know, stuff. And he did talk about different ways that you can emphasize things and put some, some cooler editing into your videos, like quick cuts and adding text on the screen and having specific words flash on the screen to emphasize things and adding in B-roll and images and slow motion, if it makes sense and all that fun stuff. And so all this stuff, by the way, he goes into way more deeply inside his YouTube from scratch course, which is all about helping you get the first thousand subscribers. Uh, I think I've mentioned several times now, I bought three other YouTube courses last year and Pat's course is the simplest to go through and the most effective and by far was the least expensive. And between September 22nd, depending on when you're listening to this, which is tomorrow through September 27th, he's offering a $50 off coupon for all of you. It's a $497 course, then you get $50 off when you enroll during those dates. I've also put some bonuses together for you. So if you wanna check that out, rickmulready.com forward slash Pat, you can go over there and get $50 off the course, which is already very inexpensive for what you're getting in that program. And then lastly, in this first part, we talked about Pat's Pokemon YouTube channel. He's gotten to over 250,000 subscribers in about a year and a half, and he shared what's made the biggest difference and you know, his approach to making the videos, spending extra time storytelling, getting people to watch all of the video, making an adventure out of it, and then really diving into the analytics. Those are, those are a few things that have really helped this channel take off so quickly. So make sure that you are using your analytics to help you make decisions about what types of videos to make and really focus on story, you know, have some fun with it. What is the story you're telling in the video as you begin to create your videos, right? And so in the second half here of the interview, we talk about batching videos, analytics. We go a lot deeper into analytics. We also talk about monetization, giving you some monetization ideas for your YouTube channel. So let's go back into it. Let's go back and hang out with Pat. You, you mentioned that you are like still recording right now. It's Wednesday to go to, for a video to come out this weekend. I would imagine that if someone is adding, like we've been talking about between these last two episodes here, if someone's adding YouTube to their business, probably batching mm -hmm. videos. Uh, batching. What's your, what are your thoughts batching on Batching is always a good idea. I do that with my podcast. I do that with my writing. I have my writing days Monday, my recording day is Tuesday, my video day is Wednesday. That's just how I've done it with my schedule. And it's always worked out really well. But the reason, or A, the way that I'm able to have time to go and shoot this video for this new channel is because I batch process all my other stuff. So that that's yeah. how I've gotten this time. We just haven't yet gotten ahead on Deep Pocket Monster because we just finished summer and I didn't have a lot of extra time to get ahead on these videos. Our, our plan is to get three weeks ahead on Deep Pocket Monster stuff, but we haven't gotten there yet. So I, I will be getting into batch processing for this channel as well. But to, all that to say, like, it's batch processing that has allowed me to now add this additional YouTube channel. So if you have a podcast or blog post or other things, there might be ways for you to get some time back to be able to dedicate to to YouTube and you don't need to dedicate a ton of time either. I mean, again, if you're starting simple, like we talked about in part one and you're recording answers to questions and you're doing just a little bit of editing, I would imagine that if you had two hours a week, you could do it for one video per week to publish. That is good enough. And that that's all you need. You just need good enough for right now and you can improve yeah. and perfect later. Yeah. And you're not saying to be, you know, what you're doing on deep pocket monster right now in terms of like going out to 
you know, shoot video at different locations and all the, yeah. So I am very, very curious whether you get 19 more cards. Don't tell me this week, whether you do or not. I want to watch the video this week. I mean, I don't even know yet either. (laughs) Because it's so, I, I'm like, holy, I, I, my brain's like, there's no way you can find 19 more cards between in the next 24 hours. We'll see. But that's the story. We'll see. Again, it's, 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 it forces me to figure it out too, right? Like I'm going to go to these card shops yeah. and drive there and I have like my hero cam with me on my chest so I can use my hands. But you don't need that. You can just use your phone also in a switch pot or something. Wink, wink. Yeah. You could, I, I, I could go to Facebook Marketplace and put in an inquiry or see who's selling these cards from this particular set. And now I have a community as well who they might be local and I could reach out to them as sort of a last ditch effort, which it may have to come down to that. But yeah, I'm excited to see where, where it goes. And because I'm excited to see where it goes, I think the audience is going to be excited to see where it goes too. Totally. And hopefully YouTube shares it with more people. You've been mentioning analytics a lot as we start to wrap up this conversation and it's, the 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 data that YouTube gives you in what is it YouTube Data Studio what is it YouTube um, Creator Studio Creator Studio yeah. thank you is like you, you learn a lot about like as you were talking about what's working what's not working okay create more of this content how should we be using what are we looking at when we go into Creator Studio so when you sign into Creator Studio often you'll see a little dashboard with some highlights and right up front you're going to see the latest video that was published and essentially it's ranking. And by ranking, it's, it's it's ranking compared to the previous 10 videos and how it's performing. You're gonna see click-through rate, you're going to see watch time, and you can click into it to just dive into a little bit more. You'll be able to then see, for example, where that traffic is coming from, suggested or browse, or is it coming from search? And that can give you some insights. But in addition to that, I also look for the retention graphs. So wh- mm. where are people dropping off in the videos and where are people sticking around? And the more that I can make that graph flat as people watch the video, meaning more people who watch the video stick around to the end, the better. And, and the more likely YouTube's going to push it out to more people. So th- those, are, those are really important. I also use the creator dashboard to see what comments are coming in. That's a great place to see mm. how people are responding. What questions do people have? What do they like? Do more of that. What do they not like? Don't mm-hmm. do that. I heart a lot of comments. It's impossible for me to heart every comment now. But when you heart a comment, that person who commented gets a notification that you saw their comment and that you you hearted it. And so that's just another mm-hmm. small, easy way for people to feel like they're being heard, which is yeah. not common on creator platforms today. So yeah. I like that. You can also see your revenue coming in, if any. If you're not at 1,000 subscribers yet, you won't see any revenue, though, that you need 1,000 subscribers to unlock AdSense revenue. That's not to say you can't use YouTube even from the start to generate an income. You can do affiliate marketing and mention products. You can do sales pitches and things like that or, or talk about your experience coaching and feed people into your software, wh- whatever it is that you have to offer. You don't need to wait to 1,000 people to, to, to recommend those things. And then finally, the other thing that I am always looking at is just which videos are getting viewed. You can see in the last 24 to 48 hours, it's on the dashboard. It'll show you like real time, which videos within the last 60 minutes people are watching and which videos within the last 48 hours people are watching. And you'll see like some bar Mm -hmm. graphs and things going up, things going down. If you see anything in there that looks weird or different or spiky, you want to go in and click into that and do some more research. Because then what happens is you might find that a video that you published six months ago just happens to be going off. And you're like, what the heck happened? That happens a lot. Yeah. You go in there and what I often do when I when that happens is I try to investigate, okay, where is this coming from? Where is all the search traffic or where is all the traffic coming from within the last 48 hours from this video that popped? Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. it just for whatever reason ranked really high in search now. That's awesome. If that's the case, cool. There's there's not much you can do other than just like keep praying that it stays up there. Or yeah. it gives you a sign to now create another video or a second video, a part two about that same one. Because that means YouTube's like, hey, you you are good at talking about this stuff. We're going to share it with more people. Create more like that. But yeah. in many cases, those spikes happen because another creator created a video. And your video just happens to be a perfect follow-up video for those people watching that that video from, from another mm. creator. And you can, you can 
you can discover some insights uh, based on that. You can reach out to that creator or you can essentially that tells YouTube, hey, this creator is connected to your audience. And so that can give you some insight. Like, 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 let's dig into their channel a little bit and see what else they're talking about and why are people interested in this? And you can d begin to determine what you can do in your future videos that, that might match up with their audience even more. Have you found that, and by the way, real quick, you said a thousand subscribers and is it like 4,000 hours or 4,000 like hours of watch time over the previous year. And if you are doing all the right things and consistent with com coming out with a video per, per week, for, for example, you're likely going to get to 4,000 hours of watch time, no problem. The yeah. reason why that's there is because, I mean, imagine a person getting a new account and then asking all their friends to subscribe. Now they got a thousand subscribers without any proof that they create videos that people want to watch, right? Yeah. And I've seen it happen before, and I, I'm not going to say this is going to happen, and it's not common, but you could have one video published and get to a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time because you just hit the nail on the head with, with the topic and whatnot. Yeah. But likely that's not going to happen. So you just keep creating videos and keep having fun with it and keep trying new things and keep improving your skills. And then you'll see it. It'll happen. I think we would be remiss before we wrap up not to talk about monetization and you just alluded to it. There's different ways to monetize, you know, the, the AdSense and so forth. We just kind of talked about, but like, if you're a coach, you sell courses, you've got a membership, sponsorships, yeah, brand deals, all those different, what's that? Brand deals, like brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, cause that's the reason why most people would consider, yeah, I want to add YouTube to my business. I don't know if the question is how easy is it to, if you're getting, you know, if you're, you're being consistent, you're doing all the things that we're talking about here. Is there a type of call to action for the YouTube platform that tends to work the best? This is a great question because there are some arguments to be had on both sides of, of the coin. And what I mean is YouTube wants people to stay on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. The more that you can help people stay on the platform, meaning they watch your video and then another video and then another video, or they're at least watching most of your video all the way through and they're not leaving the platform. Well, then YouTube's going to help you and serve your video to more people. That being sure. said, as marketers, we all know that we need to somehow, in some way, shape, or form, get people from that platform, whatever that platform may be, into our email list of, in some way. There's a couple ways to do that. You, you could take the longer approach of building the community, getting people to just stay on YouTube as much as possible, and then in your community posts area, inside of certain videos every once in a while or in a live stream that all your community is now wanting to come to you drop in a lead magnet of sorts just like we all know how to do on our blog mm -hmm. or on our podcast so a lead magnet always is the way to do it something relevant that's going to be helpful is the, is best i know some people however who will create a video and in the middle of that video they almost treat it like a quick little mid-roll ad it's a little tiny promotion for their lead magnet right in the middle of their video. And again, I would prefer to do that versus directly pushing people to your coaching offer or your online course. Let's get people to get a little bit more of an interaction with you through your email before, yeah. you know, the big ask yeah. happens. You know, you want to go on a couple of dates before, you know, you ask somebody to marry you, right? Or at least a few. If you don't, it can be kind of creepy. So what I would recommend is choose the route that makes sense for the offer that you have, but try to find a lead magnet that might make sense. And if you create a video where that lead magnet just perfectly makes sense to show, I would try to show it in an organic way, right? Okay, step five, yeah. you got to find the right products. Here is the tool that I use. Actually, I created this tool. You can get it yourself. Let me show you how to use it. And if you want access to this tool, go here. Okay, now step number six. After that, do this, this, and this organically inserting these things and using the power of video to show people how to use that lead magnet or what's inside is going to be really powerful. And it doesn't even take a very strong or aggressive call to action if what you're showing is is, is of immense value to them to, to be able to have a yeah. person sign up for it. I really like that. How can, and, and this, this goes back to one example, of, you know, like you mentioned before, of like giving yourself that creative time to think through different things. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, I want to promote whatever it might be, how do I organically do that in the video? 
rather than, and not saying anything is wrong with like having that call to action, but like, how can we organically make it part of that? You did that really well. I remember you did a video and it's got a ton of, I don't remember how many views, but the descript video that you did. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it, you were, you were promoting that platform, but you were doing it in organic way, sh showing people how to use it to do something very specific that had a ton of value with it. Yeah. So th that video, which was, I talked about it last time, I think, where I was showing people a particular thing that you can do with the script to have it essentially know your voice and you can type out whatever you want it to say and it says it in your voice. It's kind of scary. It's called overdub. And I wanted to promote Descript in it as well. So I highlighted overdub. I talked about the, the pros and cons of something like this. I demonstrated it, but I also just said, you know what, but I don't even use Descript so much for overdub. I use it for this. I use it for podcast editing. I use it for videos and it's really simple to use. In fact, if you want to check it out, just go through my link here. And that's it. It just like perfectly tied into what I was talking about. It wasn't a, hey, let me take a break from this real quick to tell you about the special offer. It's just like, right. hey, this is what I use. And it, I don't even use Overdub much, but I use this thing instead. And and like, if this sounds interesting to you too, check it out. And it's done really well for you. It, it has. That video has seen over a million views. Descript has reached back out to me to partner with me since that video. We weren't even partners then. I was just an affiliate. Yeah. And that affiliate offer has accounted for over, I think, fourteen or $15,000 in, in earnings from a video that took a day to film, less than a day, just a little bit of yeah. thought behind it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so again, as we talked about before, you go into all of these things we've been talking about. We've been talking for a total now of about an hour and 40 minutes yeah. between part one and, and, and part two here. We're just scratching the surface. Like we literally could talk about this for days. <laughs> And everything that we need to know to get those first thousand subscribers step by step is in is in the course. Yes. You two from scratch. Anything else that people should know about it? I mean, it's what I wish existed when I started because nothing existed back then and it took me nine years to get to a hundred thousand subscribers. And then starting this new channel with all these things in mind, it took me eleven months. <laughs> with with Deep Pocket yeah. Monster. Mind you, it's a different channel and a different audience, but the principles all all remain the same. We've taken out all the confusing stuff and we've just made it, like you said, step by step. So YouTube from scratch, my videographer and partner, Caleb, is co sort of host with me on this course. And he's got seven to ten years of experience on YouTube plus my 10. I mean, this is like 20 years worth of YouTube experience that you're getting inside of an easy to follow course for a very, very low price, relatively speaking. And yeah. in addition to that, if you get in and you're like, hey, I don't like this or it's not what I expected, you can ask for your money back. This is a 30 day, well, what I like to call win with Flynn money back guarantee, which means if you get in there and it's like not working for you or you don't see the value in it, ask for your money back. No questions asked, we'll give it to you. I don't deserve your money if it's not something that's helping so yeah. all the risk is on me. It's just going to take some an investment because that's what it is. This is one of those things that can clearly, especially if you know what your offers are, provide a clear ROI on the other end. And then what I would recommend doing on top of that, specifically for your audience, is once you get in there and you start creating videos and you start you know, getting people into your email list and start making sales, track. That's one thing yeah. that I think would be best for your audiences to track to see like really how well is YouTube actually helping? Like, like, yes, you'll get views. Yes, you'll get subscribers, but you'll also see direct sales coming in as a result of the relationships you're building there. And I think that's really exciting. So I appreciate you having me on for these two parts and, and for all of you and your attention. Yeah, and I hope that we could see you in the course. And I know you have like some special stuff at, at the link that you mentioned earlier, but uh, bonuses, I yeah. just appreciate your support, Rick. Yeah, man. And, and just real, real quick, going back to before I have purchased other courses. you said it's an investment but like i've purchased other ones that I, again like i went in there and i was like, <sighs> like i'm so overwhelmed i'm out of here thousands of dollars oh, i was gonna say like i like, know some of those courses i won't mention any names but those were thousands right. of dollars that that you invested in yeah yeah this so, is not a thousand <laughs> by the way no 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 so rickmulready.com forward slash pat my friends go get youtube from scratch i've got bonuses there for you as well when you enroll in the course through that link my friend, thank you. Thanks, man. For doing two parts here with me.
Now go to the card stores real, real, real quick. Let's list out all the places that people can connect with you also. Sure. Yeah, you're cutting into it. my card shopping time, man. I know, I know, I know. Smartpassiveincome.com is the main site. That's where my team and I, we're, we're there to help you get to where you want to go. We help you get there. That's our motto. And wherever there may be, we, we can serve you. The YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Pat Flynn or Deep Pocket Monster. Pocket Monster is what Pokemon is actually short for. And then at Pat Flynn on most social media channels, Instagram and Twitter are my most active. And I'm trying to be a little bit more active on LinkedIn recently. So if you want to find me there, you can as well. Sweet. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go find your cards. I will. All right, my friend, you're hearing it here right now that I'm committing to getting my YouTube channel going. And what I mean by that is I'm committing to consistency. I, I'm not, I don't necessarily care about number of subscribers. Of course, that's helps the ego, right? But my only goal here is consistency for a year. I want to be producing and putting out a video per week over the next 12 months. So you're hearing it here right now. And helping me do that is, as we've been talking about here on the podcast between today and then part one last week, is Pat's YouTube from scratch course. Walks you through step by step. I'm a proud affiliate. I put together a couple of bonuses for you when you enroll in Pat's program. It's an investment that is so, I've told Pat, like, dude, you got to raise the price on this. And I'm not just like, that's not some scammy kind of thing. Seriously. rickmulry.com forward slash Pat and go check it out. Let me know what you think and keep me updated on how the progress of your YouTube channel is going. There's a huge opportunity there, as you've heard between today and last week in part one. Thank you, my friend, as always for tuning in, hanging out with me each and every week. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast here. Until next week, be well. I'll talk to you soon.